This entitled man is determined that he's not responsible for his password changing. He'll blame absolutely everyone except himself. But when this helpful person decides to prompt them a little bit, he begins to realize the folly of his ways. Happy birthday, today's your birthday, on with the revamped show. The backstory. I am one of only two IT personnel at a dozen plus building facility with over 1,000 endpoints. Naturally, they smash every IT position into one role. We issue multi-factor authentication devices to management and some senior staff so they can do their work off-site. Once the handoff of the device is complete, our responsibility ends and the user has a packet with all the data to get them up and going. A separate remote team for MFA exists exclusively for support of these devices. This has been protocol for years. I clock in and find a nasty email from Director 1 sitting in my inbox this morning about how unacceptable and unbelievable that one of their staff could not log in from their home this weekend due to user's MFA device not functioning correctly for months. First we've heard of the issue. Director has been in their position 10 plus years. My response CC to all directors. All support for these devices is handled by the MFA team as stated when the devices are issued. We have neither the tools nor ability to help in this matter. In the future, please have the user contact MFA team at number, as explicitly stated in the documentation. 30 minutes later, I am called into D1's office. D1 and two other directors, D2 and 3, start arguing with me why I didn't solve the issue. All support for these devices is handled by the external MFA team. User can call the number provided for support. As I said, we do not have the tools to do this. D2 voice raising. Why won't you help user? Aren't you IT? Can't you solve simple problems? All support for these devices is handled by the Would you just do your job? That's exactly my point. He isn't helping user with this. I'm going to issue a corrective action plan and I will report this incident to HR. Me staring. What is it exactly you need me to do? Picture these three directors cursing and pointing at me for nearly 10 minutes. I'm talking walls of vibrating with their screams. Other directors in the hall close their doors as I'm getting verbally clobbered. I stare through the wall. My anxiety is through the roof. Insult after insult about work performance. How this is typical of how shoddy we are as IT professionals. Finally, user in question comes to the door. Do your darn job and get user set up. I'm visibly shaking at this point, stunned. Breathing heavily, I manage to walk over to D1's desk phone. On speakerphone, I proceed to dial the offsite MFA team's number. A voice comes on the line. MFA guy, can I help you? I motion to user to introduce themselves and speak their issue. About 90 seconds later, user can log in. Tested, works perfectly. Everyone is silent and staring at me. I shake my head disgustedly and leave. D1, 2 and 3 have avoided eye contact with me all day. Continuing with part two of the story. I'm providing more backstory of a normal work week so that you understand what is going on. We're in the middle of an ongoing technology refresh among over a dozen buildings over 50 plus acres. Actually, I recently found out it's closer to 1900 endpoints. Again, there's only two of us. And when someone has a help desk request, since we're either doing provisioning, network administration or something else, most of the time they call for site security to sweep the halls of the building, and security physically escorts us to the user having the issue. So 10 to 20 times a day I'll try to do a deployment or work in a distribution frame, and I'll hear radio chatter behind me and a, got him, and sometimes be led, by the arm, to buildings a 10 minute walk away. Such reasons for being escorted this week have been 1. User forgot where the enter key was. 2. User forgot password, written in front of them on a post-it note. I pointed it out, then wagged my finger. 3. A pencil sharpener wasn't working. It needed to be plugged in. 4. User didn't understand how to plug in a USB drive. And 5. User having issues with air conditioning unit. After the 12 minute escort I informed user I was IT, not facilities. In addition to this we get scheduled to meetings both as standby and participant, sometimes double booked as mentioned in previous posts. Standby is where we are summoned and requested to stay whenever there is technology involved. Video conferences, WebExes, Skype calls. 
because the managers need IT to be in the room with them in case something happens. As such, the past two days, about eight hours each day, has been dedicated to being present in those meetings. This happens sometimes. It was an administratively meeting-heavy week. If we try to duck from these meetings, cue the security sweep and escort. Learn that one the hard way. Director of our department, D1 from previous story, has been asking for updates regarding the deployment of new units and a status report on how many old units remain across over a dozen plus building complex. Our network itself is locked down by our governing body. I previously informed D1 we have no access to sweep the network across this sprawling site. With my bit of infosec background, I tried things like Nmap scans and NCE scripts. So here we go, into today's story. D1 calls me into their office and asks me to shut the door. How many units were deployed the past two days? We were scheduled as standby for meeting one, two, three, both days. And where is the status report I asked for on the outstanding endpoints? We have not been able to physically go around to all of the sites. We are scheduled for these meetings and escorted for various help desk requests. I CC'd you on all of the tickets generated. I get the feeling you are deliberately disobeying my requests. As I mentioned, we are requested to be in multiple places at once. What you are asking for is physically impossible right now. D1 now yelling, I explicitly asked you to complete this report. How can I walk around the site, inventorying units while scheduled to stand by in conference rooms and deploying units and being escorted around to non-IT issues? D1 stares at me with the intensity that I insulted their family. Me pleading. Can someone else please just be trusted to set up conferences and WebExes? But you are IT! Could we get area managers to report back how many old units are in their locations? I'm just trying to offer solutions so that we can execute on schedule. D1 seething. Leave my office now! A few minutes later, I get a call from HR requesting I meet with them. On my way to HR, I hear another, got him, and was again escorted by security to a user three buildings away. The issue? A monitor was turned off. A simple power button press fixed it. Finally, in HR's office, I am presented with a written warning for multiple accounts of insubordination, along with a day of reflection, one day suspension without pay. I refused to sign off. I was told to see D1 after reading my warning. So I returned to D1's office. I think you misunderstand why we had to do this. I don't like having to take disciplinary action. Actually, I don't understand at all. Well, now you have an extra day to think about it. And I expect that report first thing on your return. That's not possible. I have to be here physically to inventory the site. You are dismissed. I stood up and thanked D1 for their time and walked out. Placed my keys, ID card and fob on the desk. Took all personal items with me. Then left the site. I still had an hour left in the day. Didn't even clock out. Update. Oh man, this could not have been better timed. Sidewide network outage prompts D1 to call me the morning after. We're experiencing a sidewide outage. I need you to come in and find the problem. I'm currently suspended without pay per your orders. I understand, but you either come in or you're fired. Okay. So are you coming in? I took a long pause to think about how I worded this. No, I don't think I will. If you go into my office, you will notice all of my company issued things are already on my desk. Director 1 doesn't say anything. It's been a pleasure working with you, D1. I wish you the best in the future. I blocked every director, blocked every site phone number I knew. So, uh, that's it, I guess. Sometimes businesses fail just simply because of market demand. Competition comes in and out-innovates them. Or people just don't want what they're selling anymore. Other times, businesses fail because of reasons like this. The director has no idea what's going on and thinks he does. His solution is basically to bully IT into doing whatever he wants them to do, whether it's possible or not. It's physically impossible for the IT guy to be everywhere at once. And yet that's what they expect out of them. A good director would take the time to listen to IT to see what it is they need to best do their job properly. Recap for those of you who don't know, I'm a technical advisor for CCTV products, which includes a lot of IT. Most of our customers have adequate IT knowledge to being able to do their job. General IT knowledge such as understanding subnet masks, use of PCs, etc, etc. But the small percentage does not. The backstory. Customer calls me and tells me one of the cameras is broken. I tell him to send the device to me before shipping it over to RMA, so I can have a closer look. I check the device. 
I find out the firmware got corrupted, probably caused by a bad file. I flash the device, works again, nice and dandy. I reset the device and send it back over to him. Two weeks later, I get a call. Hello, me speaking. Yes, hello me. How do I access the web page of this device? Oh, you just log on to the default IP address of the camera. It's X. I did. It's not working. Did you send me a broken camera? Strange. No, let me check through TeamViewer, please. I TeamViewer his PC and see that he's connected to the web page. Okay, well, the web page is working, right? No, it's not. What's the problem? Well, I can't log into the device if you change the password, right? Me? When did I do that? When the camera was sent to you. I definitely reset the device. Standard practice for us. No, no, it was like this when I already got it. Sir, I guarantee you I did not change your password. The device should prompt an installation process that tells you to put in a password yourself. I, uh, no, you changed the password. Did you get a prompt to do so? I don't remember. But you definitely changed the password. The device went to you. Look, once again, I guarantee you that I did not. Well, I did to test- Haha, <laughs> see? So type in the password you changed it to. No, I changed it to test certain things, but afterwards I reset the entire device. No, not possible. Clearly you already put in a password. Okay, put in a password you usually use for your devices. No, no, that won't work, trust me. Just give it a go. Fine, I'll try a password. We're logged in to the camera. I... Was that everything, sir? Y yes sorry. I must have initialized it without really understanding what I was doing. Alright, have a nice day, sir. Needless to say, I was more than annoyed. The backstory. A couple years back, I worked at a small community-based healthcare organization. It was small enough that the entire IT department was three people, and a person who took care of the electronic health record system wasn't really IT, just managed the software itself. It was near Christmas time, so everyone was on vacation except myself and the software person to support the electronic records. We had a particularly explosive doctor around that was known for yelling at staff, etc. So, of course, we were told to treat this person with kid gloves. In the cast is me and MD, Mad Doc. Thanks for calling the help desk, blah blah blah. How can I help you this morning? I've got patients this morning and I can't log onto the health records. Log me in now. What do you mean you can't log in? Did you change your password recently? Does it not load? Meanwhile, doing some basic troubleshooting, making sure server is up, etc. I should log me in. I have patience and I cannot wait. Sorry, but I cannot do that. I don't know your pass. What do you not understand? Log me in. Sorry, but again, I don't know your password. I'm going to transfer you to the software support person. Hopefully they can help. I already knew that they weren't there, as they usually came in an hour after, so I knew to expect another call. Few minutes later, like not even two or three minutes. Hey MD, did they not answer? No, I said I need to log in now to see my patients. Again, I'm sorry, I cannot help. I don't know your password. I don't know why you would tech support and I need to log in now. I make this company money and you spend it. Log me in. At this point, MD was once again forwarded back to the software support person, still knowing they hadn't come in yet. What transpired over the next half hour or so was repeated calls to the help desk that were sent to the holding queue and forwarded to the software person. When they came in and finally got the doc squared away, came over to me to ask why they had multiple angry voicemails. The solution to it all? The doc forgot the password for the record system he had changed the day before, and the software person changed it and logged him back in. For those who may ask, no, we in IT didn't have access to the software, just the servers it ran on. If he's the one who's making the company all the money, why put something so important just on that one person? And his ability to remember the password. I mean, technically, yes, it seems like the software person also had access and was able to change the password for him, but they don't sound like a reliable person if they're always getting in late. And if you want help from somebody, perhaps the best thing to do is not just yell at them the whole time. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. All right, Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.